Good morning to all the residents of the Americas, good afternoon to everyone standing more or less around the Greenwich time zone and good evening to everyone hailing from Asia. Today is Sunday, today is the day where we go over some of the tips I wish everyone knew about when getting into raiding or perhaps some of the major mistakes that, that I often see players do when they get into raiding, perhaps they're still new to raiding or perhaps they simply never learned these things and they just continued with their own method of raiding, missing these quite important things to keep an eye out on when you are raiding. Now, of course, you can have different levels. You can be raiding at, at different stages. You might be a heroic raider. You might be in the guild that gets out of the curve and then gets into the first mythic bosses, or you could be the one that pushes midway through mythic progression or one of the guilds that gets tries to get to cutting edge. So there are different levels of raiding, of course, but I believe most of these points are going to touch more, more or less everyone who gets into raiding at a good enough level where, you know, wiping over and over and not killing the boss and constantly making mistakes is going to disappoint people. At this level of raiding, there are some tips I wish everyone would be aware about when getting into raiding, and I'm here to illustrate them to you on this Sunday. Tip number one. Tip number one, let's reuse what we already used in the Mythic Plus tips. Maybe you don't care about Mythic Plus, so you never actually heard this. It's the tip about your health being very important in the raid. Just like the old Confucius saying goes, if you have zero HP, you do zero DPS. So it is very important for you to stay alive when you are raiding. This includes keeping a very nice and clean eye out on for all the mechanics that might be killing you. Yes, yes, I understand that even if you get into raiding as a new player, even if you are a fresh raider, you kind of get the idea that you are a DPS, there are healers in your raid, not just a healer, there is like five healers in your raid, so if you die, it's the healer's fault, right? Unless you were called out for standing on bed, unless you were standing in a pit of fire, then it's the healer's fault. Well, you know, sometimes it just so happens that you might not be at full HP at all times. Sometimes it just so happens that a big, dangerous, scary ability is about to come down on you and you have 50% HP. Now, you need to be aware that the ability that's coming out is hitting you for 60% of your HP, which means if you don't do anything about it, you are going to die. Yes, yes, there were five healers in the raid. Yes, none of the healers happened to heal you for a few seconds. However, you had your first defensive available, your second defensive, your health stone, and your health potion. And you use none of them. Five. That is the main thing you need to take care of when you start raiding, which is taking care of your own health. Yes, just for a second, try to remove from the equation that there are healers in the raid and they are supposed to save you at all times. That would be the best. However, you will learn quickly that the deeper you go into raiding, perhaps this start affecting more and more as you get towards the higher uh, rankings and ratings of mythic raiding. So by now, if you're past Alondrus, more or less, this should already apply to you. Many times, some mechanics, certain mechanics and certain overlaps of abilities will require the players themselves to also save themselves, to also use their defensives to stay alive, use the health potion to stay alive, use the health stone to stay alive. This means you need to be aware of all of the situations, all of the places in an encounter which might kill you. That's the first, the most important thing before we go even anything else in the raid, because as I said, if this kills you, then you have no DPS because you're dead and then you're gonna wipe. So this is the first thing you need to take care of, knowing when dangerous stuff is about to happen and being able to tell if you're about to be in danger from these type of mechanics or not. That's the first thing you need to take care of when you raid. Don't just expect, I'm here with a bunch of healers, they have to heal me, period. Because that's gonna go away real quick. <laughs> it's gonna be fine in normal, it's gonna be fine for most of heroic nowadays, it's gonna be fine even for a few bosses early into mythic, but then it won't. Then it definitely won't. So that's something you need to take care of and keep an eye out on when you go into raiding. The next point, I'm afraid, I'm afraid if you are one of the traditionalists, if you are one of the fundamentalist vanilla players, I'm afraid that if you want to get into raiding, you will also need to make use of addons. Again, it's fine in LFR, it's fine in normal, it's even perhaps, you can even get away with doing it in heroic up until halfway through the bosses, but then after a while, you will have to start using addons. 
uh, in the in the case of raiding you will have to use things like dbm or big wigs you will still need to use weak auras for your own set of abilities and other better help in understanding mechanics better than your boss mod can do and even other additions that can help you even more like raid frames for healers for example uh, raid tools to check the the cooldowns available the the movement speed cooldowns available and all that sort of stuff maybe even using notes for healers for players with raid cooldowns to use all these things are going to be things that will be required for you inside raiding so it's something that you need to take an eye out on in the case of raiding what becomes even more important instead of what we said about mythic plus is that you can also minimax these add-ons unlike mythic plus where most of the bosses in dungeons will have three to four abilities so who cares just install the add-on get going in the case of raiding nowadays your average boss is going to have 34 different abilities which means you're gonna have a very hard time keeping track of everything that's happening and knowing which of the things are dangerous which of the things you need to take care of which of the things are going to be directed at you and which of the things you can ignore so in the case of raiding it's not just about download these add-ons it's not just about hey guys head over at wago.io pick your Wikora set your Wikora suite for your destruction warlock and then go over here and download deadly boss mods and you're done your raiding setup is done it doesn't work like that because for example if you're a ranged dps and you're fighting the jailer you're expected to ignore you're expected to black out of your memory don't even let them pop up on your screen just about 70 percent of the mechanic if you don't do that you will get a lot of clutter in uh, information that will be shown to you in your screen which will do nothing but confuse you it will do nothing but just deceive you in what you should be paying attention to so that is also something that raiders will have to do more than if you were just using these type of add-ons for mythic plus they require a little bit more further tuning once you get into them much like something else we will talk about soon like muscle memory it is something you will learn over time how to how to tune them you know you will start the boss with all of the abilities showing up in your add-ons and then after 10 to 15 wipes you will start one Wondering, why the hell am I seeing this thing over here? This is the taunt swap mechanic. I am a fire mage. Do I need to see a timer, an announcement voice, and a countdown for a taunt swap? No, I don't. So I get to remove it. And then you go down 20 wipes, 25 wipes, 30 wipes, and progressively you will have cleaned out all of the garbage that you don't need when you're raiding. So you have as much space as possible to pay attention to the stuff that actually matters. This is very important for when you are raiding. Talking about this, the next thing that will follow, as we said, going through 20, 30, 40 wipes, the next thing that will come is muscle memory. So this is another thing that will help you a lot as you get into raiding, which is repeating what you are doing. Never try to just randomly go left and right, randomly try to stay here. What about going into this spot? What about moving here where I haven't before? What will help you a lot when you're raiding is muscle memory, is being able to go into the same spot every time. Imagine this is like a, a Super Mario, you know, a Mario Bros game where you have to go in a platformer and you're going through the same route and then you're jumping and you land and it's one of those disappearing tiles and you fall down and you die. Now you start again and you know that you don't have to jump there because there is a disappearing tile. This is gonna have the same logic when you're raiding. You will position in a place, if that place is good, if nobody is yelling at you because you're doing something dumb, then that place is okay, just stay there. And then one minute later you have to move because there is a mechanic, you move into this position, something bad happens you blocked the tank the tank was supposed to move through there and you fucked everything up cool now the next pool you will know that the position right there was wrong so now you will go instead of here you will go here now was this fine okay if this was fine then you stay there this will continue to go on on and on so that after 20 or 30 or 40 pools you will know where you have to stay not because you learned about the mechanics, not because you learned about all of the strategies, but simply because you stayed there before. Simply because you stayed there before and you learned that it was okay to stay there. This is what muscle memory will give you if you actually stay still for a minute and you keep trying to repeat the things you were doing before that worked. That is going to help you a lot in raiding because it will further remove things you need to keep an eye out on things you need to pay attention to from your screen right first 
with the add-ons you started taking away unnecessary abilities unnecessary warnings unnecessary countdowns that you didn't want to see which freed you freed your eyes from realizing what's going on and then you started moving in the same space in the same spot every time which also started to free you from having to pay too much attention to mechanics imagine there is the super mega smackdown of doom which one shots everyone if you stand in it you already know that once you moved into this spot, this spot was safe. You don't have to care about the super mega smack of doom because you already know you're safe there and you will always be safe there, which means you have to pay less attention to the super mega smack of doom, which will freeze you, gives you more window to be aware of other things happening into the raid. And this will come with muscle memory, with repetition of doing the same things you were doing before multiple times. So you will be able to do it passively, naturally, without putting too much thought into it. That will help you a lot in raiding talking about what you can do repeatedly in raiding i know in case you weren't aware of raiding is a lot about repetitiveness right it's a lot about trying to kill the same boss dozens of times if not hundreds of times another thing that might help you a lot is to record everything now this might be that you don't have the means to do so okay perhaps your pc is a class a potato and is literally about to melt the moment you start to record anything but if you can if you are able to it is a very good suggestion to record everything in your raid whether or not you're using the nvidia shadow play or the amd replay system or if you are using obs to record or maybe even to stream and then use the vod as the the source doesn't matter any way you can if you're able to it's always going to help if you can record because then you can look at yourself you can look at the movements you can look at the situation that were happening in the in the raid and you can get a very good idea of what's happening because you will <laughs> you will be surprised by the amount of things you don't quite realize in the in the heat of the fight this is something for example i use a lot when i want to start purging away stuff i don't need in the fight i will look at my replays I will start looking at the amount of debuffs that are showing up in my frames, the amount of warnings showing up in the middle of my screen, and the amount of bars or icons showing up for the different mechanics, and I will start picking them off one by one, all the useless things I don't need to see. Eventually, the next time I will be raiding, I will have a much more clean, a much more clean UI, much fewer things clogging my view of what's going on in the encounter, and will make it much easier to, to see much easier to see the fight so when it comes to recording this can also help you because now you don't have to do it as you're fighting as you're in the middle of the fight as you're trying to do your rotation and everything you can sit back relax on a replay and check it out calmly after which is going to be much much easier to see what you're doing wrong what you're doing right what you should do again what you should never do it's gonna be much easier for you so these to me are the, the most important tips when it's about raiding. Of course, there isn't really a secret tip that you can read or watch in a video that will make you a god gamer in raiding, right? You can't expect to open a raiding guide and the tip is going to be do these three secret things to triple your DPS. It's not gonna happen, right? I'm assuming as part of the tips for raiding, I'm assuming you already know your rotation. You already know your build, your talents, and your legendaries. These are things you should already know by yourself before you even get into raiding. So assuming, assuming you already know all of that, assuming you already know everything about your own class and spec, then what's left is the encounter and the environment that you are in. A lot of this stuff is going to be stuff that can be checked outside of the raid. This is a very painful point for many raid leaders that weep every night once they realize that their raiders are actually spending all day playing Counter-Strike, log in five minutes before a raid start, wipe a bunch and then leave on the dot of 11 when the raid ends and go back to play PUBG or something. This is gonna happen, you're free to do it, okay? Nobody is stopping you from doing that. I'm just saying that unfortunately, if you're not a fan of these type of tips many of the tips to improve your raiding performance are not going to be things that you will just be able to do like that inside the raid they will take a few more tuning and screwing of bolts outside of the raid checking your own recordings checking warcraft logs and and and, and logs of what happened you know am i casting enough of this am i casting enough of that is my position correct is it not 
Let's go and check my add-ons. Should these Wikora helpers, these Wikora packs for the boss, should I start removing some of the things that are useless? What about my boss mod? Should I start removing this ability and this ability that I don't need to see? A lot of this stuff is not going to be just in the raid. So it's not really going to have a very immediate effect in terms of your performance. You need to, you do, you do need to have the will, the willpower of spending some more time outside of the raid if you are hoping in improving a little bit your performance, your understanding of how a raid works, how raid mechanics work, etc, etc. It is going to take a little bit of, of extra legwork, essentially in overtime, okay? Post-raid hours or pre-raid hours is what will have to happen. So these were the main tips when it comes to raiding. Once again, a lot of importance and make sure to understand at which moments of the fight you are at the most risk of dying and you need to know if you need to use certain defensives or health potions or health stones to make sure you live even though supposedly a healer is supposed to heal you just imagine healers don't exist and start thinking about for yourself and for your own safety understanding that once again add-ons are still king in the raid so you still need to take good care of the add-ons that will help you in the raid because the add-ons are super powerful if you agree that add-ons are super powerful, then you should treat them as such. You should try to abuse them as much as possible to be able to give you as much power as possible in the raid. Don't just download whatever suggestion you hear about and then just leave it at that in its default factory build state without any adjustments for your own uh, playstyle, for your own spec and role and whatnot. Then muscle memory is also very important when you raid. Make sure you try to repeat the same things you were doing before so that eventually this will become natural, it will become passive, it will become an afterthought in your brain, you will not have to spend too much time thinking about several things that you can start doing on autopilot because of your muscle memory of the encounter. And lastly, you have the recording. Try to record stuff, try to record if your PC is able to sustain it, try to record everything, look back at it whenever you have time, look back at your best pulls, you know, when you can see the most of the fight and see what you were doing. Look at the recording also to see just how much clutter you have on the screen, if you have to remove certain add-ons or certain parts of certain add-ons because they are clogging too much of your screen and it makes it difficult to pay attention and focus on the really important stuff in the fight. So with this being all together, once you master all of these things in no time, you will turn yourself into a Hall of Fame Raider. Now, the only problem then becomes trying to find a guild and actually convince them that this video is all you need to show them as proof that you are a top gamer. But, but you know what, if you're leaving behind your contact info and the guild you are applying to, I will make sure to leave a good word in your name. <laughs> I will vouch for you if you have mastered all of the tips in this video when it comes to raiding. So with this being said, we can also stop today's Sunday video when it comes to tips I wish everyone was aware about or mistakes I wish everyone would stop from committing when it comes to raiding. I hope this will help someone in the next few days or weeks or resets. I hope some of you will be able to see the, the good results of sticking to these rules when it comes to raiding and, and will improve your performance somewhat. I would be very happy if that were to happen. Now, with this being said and done, thank you for watching the video and for helping to go the channel, which can be done further by liking and commenting on this video as well as subscribing to my channel today. This one being a raid video, I'm going to leave the subscription button open to everyone who has, uh, you know, who is following at least a couple of these tips already. You get, you get the freedom to subscribe to the channel. I am also found as an addition on Twitter in this direction. I have kind of slacked recently on tweets. I'm never going to make it in the e-celeb world, unfortunately. But, but you can, however, support me even more on Patreon in this direction. Supporting me on Patreon gives you access to my Discord, which is a little bit too barren and empty of discussion, so you can join in and say whatever dumb thing you want, unless it's too dumb, in which case I will mute you, but I will trust your judgment in making good and interesting conversation starters. This being said, thank you guys again, see you guys soon, and in the meantime, it's crazy. Yesterday was hot as fuck, and now, now it's fine. Now I'm almost cold on my feet. Wow, it truly is spring.